Ernest Napoleon was born Ernest Rondala in Moscow, Russia to a Tanzanian dad and a Russian mom. Since nursery school, Napoleon was always intrigued by acting. At age four, he had a chance to live and grow up in Dar es Salaam. Later on in life, he worked in multiple entertainment jobs such as a DJ, a TV host, and even made bongo flavor hits like Superstar Wabongo and Tough Siri under the stage name MC Napo. Took a little break to pursue school, but even after graduating, he still had maintained the passion for acting. In 2011, he got the idea of filming a movie in Africa about an American doctor who goes to work in Africa and never goes back. Now that movie is what we now know as Going Bongo. Here's our one-on-one -on -one interview with Ernest Napoleon himself. Hi, how are you doing Ernest? I'm doing okay, acceptable. That's, that's good. Um, so let's begin. You've gone by several names, I suppose, depending on the role that you've been playing within your lifetime. But um, what's the best name, or how would you like me to refer to you as? Oh, wow. what's the best name? Uh, well, you can call me Ernest Napoleon. I guess that's what it says on IMDb. I know you have a little story that comes with your name. Um, do you want to share that story? <laughs> Yeah, when I, was, when I was a kid, I was a kid, meaning I was like uh, four, five. I always used to have made very detailed plans about my day. It's kid stuff, but still, like it was really detailed, like 20, 30, 40 things that I have to do uh, as a kid daily or something. So my mom right. used to say, "Well, you're making Napoleon. You, you're making plans like Napoleon." Um, she was Russian, so I guess Napoleon meant something to to them. Yeah. They, he fought the Russians quite a lot, but <laughs> I didn't know the history behind Napoleon, so I researched. When I grew up, I there was no Google, so I had to. I watched the film about Napoleon. I read a book. I was like, okay, I'm gonna call myself Napoleon then. Did you um, have to reach deep to, to relate to the character of Dr. Lewis or were the traits more um, personal? Was that like, is, is he closer to your original character or persona or did you have to do research into becoming or embodying Dr. Lewis? I had to do some research, I had to read a bunch of stories about doctors without orders, their personal diaries to see their insecurities, etc, etc. Um, one thing that I guess Louis may be close to me is that when Louis is in LA, he's seen as a black guy, and when he's in Africa, he's seen as a white guy. It's something that I've experienced living in, in Russia. I was always the black kid. Right. And then living in Tanzania, I was always the white guy. So it's in that case, I was relatable. But in terms of what doctors go through, the, the tics they have, the, the insecurities, the those kind of things, because I. For me, actually, I really hate doctors. <laughs> so I really had to research to become a doctor and to, to become, to, to do surgeries. I'm actually scared of surgeries, so I had to watch videos on surgeries and how to do surgeries. Did you, when you, there is a scene that you're actually doing, there is a scene in um, Going Bongo where you're actually attempting or doing a surgery. What was that? Was that like... Uh, an animal, or what was it that you actually did the surgery on? Oh yeah, that that that, that the, the the surgery scene. Yeah, it was we're doing a surgery, but it wasn't. I mean, it was based on videos that I've seen on surgery, but it wasn't a real surgery. Of course, there was an extra line there, and we had some chicken liver and <laughs> blood. Okay. The equipment, the equipment was all real. That was real equipment, actually. We were in the actual surgery room. Okay. In any moment, they could have taken over the room and said, we need to do this <laughs> So actually, ER. Oh, wow. <laughs> so ER on the weekend. So throughout the filming of Going Bongo, are there like certain um, instances or scenes that impacted you 
in a, in a way or made an impact on your life personally? Yeah, I think the, the birth scene was really something because I was, uh, the baby that we got for the birth scene was like one day old. Oh. So I was kind of like holding a one day old baby and the whole, like that was kind of like a really, uh, really touching moment. Even shooting that scene was like really uh, emotional. Yeah. I think that was, that's like, okay, we're, <laughs> this is not just a film, but we're actually interacting with like, the person who was just born yesterday, drive to a cop to do this work. So it was like, well, this film better be good. <laughs> Wow. And then I was so scared and the baby was like really good. The baby was always sleeping and stuff. The baby was a natural actor. <laughs> yeah, the chill out actor. <laughs> when you move the baby around, because I had to move from his mother to kind of walk with him towards the table, everybody was like, you could hear people like gasp. It's like, oh my God, this is going to drop the baby. Oh so no. It was <laughs> So it was a lot of tension. The baby scene was really a lot of tension, but it was the most rewarding scene, I think. And it, I think it came out that way in the film as well. Yeah, it was more um, natural, I guess. So, um, what results do you expect from this film? I know, like when you were trying, when you were in pursuit of making the film, you wanted to. Um, raise a standard, bring awareness to the quality of filmmaking and the efforts into making a certain standard um, towards filming. But what results are you expecting from the film? I think the goal is, is has, has not been changing that much. I'm just maybe surprised by the reaction where I realized that I'm not even trying to raise just Tanzanian film quality, but I'm trying to raise Kenya and Uganda. I've had emails from Rwanda, uh, Congo, so other parts of the world, even Nigeria. So the, uh, now I'm thinking of a bigger goal of actually developing films, raising quality of African films. Right. Uh, and trying to get people to invest more money into making films in Africa. Because uh, so far we get very few films from Hollywood, one film every like. I don't even remember what's the last film about Africa that was impactful. Maybe uh, the, Scotland, maybe. Was it the Mandela movie? Mandela, yeah. yeah. Mandela movie. But before the Mandela movie, we have to go back to yeah. asking of Scotland. Yeah, that's true. And you have to go Diamond and Hotel Rwanda, and it's just not enough. Yeah. So I'm trying to, to, to get more films into Africa. So now I'm thinking more East Africa, you know than just Tanzania, I'm thinking more of like Kenyan films, Ugandan films, Rwanda, Burundi. I think all of those places have potential to to raise the quality of, of, of filmmaking that we do. I mean, we have really, really talented actors. Uh, I've been fortunate to work with really talented actors in Kenya and Tanzania. Well, it's kind of like a domino effect. You may be the first person that initiates raising a standard, but the impact of that movie um, transforms right. the way someone else views and someone else views, and your circle of influence keeps expanding. And um, yeah. But how does it feel to be the first East African film accepted by iTunes? Is that a, one of your great accomplishments? The funny thing is that that wasn't really the that wasn't really something that we pursued saying we're going to be the first film on iTunes. The reason why I went on iTunes is because unlike other films which are original, our film is more international. Mm -hmm. Where we have uh, people from Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, Ethiopia sitting in the UK, others are sitting in Germany, others are in France, in US, Canada. And because it's a small film, we cannot really launch theatrically everywhere because that would be very expensive. So that's why we decided to go on iTunes and kind of get the, the product straight to the consumer. As but opposed to going to film festivals, you kind of wanted yeah. to do a... a... Yeah, we wanted to, to go on with the 21st, 20, what, 22nd century. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> funny, but that's right. <laughs> yeah, we're the generation that doesn't really go to the theater. 
we're the generation that wants everything on an iPad, on the phone, want to share, and stuff like that. So that's why even the way this movie is marketed is marketed mo mostly online. So, so when we went through a rigorous, rigorous process of getting the film on iTunes, then we were like, wow, these guys don't play because the aggregators have to like you, then the iTunes have to like you, then you have to go back and forth and fix this, fix that, mm -hmm. then you have to raise the quality of certain scenes, certain sounds. So after we finished, we were like, wow, who else has done this? This seems to be really rigorous. Right. And when we researched, we realized that there's no really any stuff can film on iTunes. Wow. That was really big, so I was like, oh wow, so we are the first East African film on iTunes, so that's it. Another grounds that we're breaking, basically. You're pioneering on. Right, yeah, we're pioneering on, mainly by accident, but <laughs> we accept it. <laughs> um, so, are, are there any plans on making an official soundtrack, and um, what made you select the artist that you did, for example, Vanessa M. Day? Um, I know you did use her um, song, one of her songs on your trailers, and was that a marketing tactic? Um, I'm going to start with the second question. Uh, okay. This wasn't really a marketing tactic because you, 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 there are bigger artists than Vanessa Day. I mean, if it was a marketing artist, then maybe I'll take someone who's bigger, maybe like Chameleon or like. Uh, Lady JD, uh, Diamond, right. you know, those, those people, but it's just, just that, that song, when I heard it, instinctually, I thought of the film, and I thought that it would make for a great teaser, right. and then we just communicated with her to see how we can make it happen, so that's how I really go off instincts and of things that fit, if something does not fit, even if it's marketing and rewarding, I would not really do it, because it would just feel wrong, people would watch it, and it would be like, it just doesn't fit. So that song fit correctly and to answer the first question there's not really an official soundtrack we only used maybe three or four songs of other people and the rest were done by a, a really great composer is a really young guy who i think is going to be really big named Hi. alex hemlock and um, so there's no really plans for a soundtrack just because we didn't really think that even the soundtrack could be valuable at this point, and now we realize it is. Yes. So it's kind of like... I, really I personally big. feel like you, you superbly um, art, like articulated the music with the, with the scenes when right. I was watching, and like you, you went into in-depth detail to ensure that those songs were also collaborated correctly with the scenes. So I, I think that it, it had potential of making a soundtrack. Yeah, I mean, we can always do that. I mean, we have the songs, just a matter of compiling them and saying, okay, this is the soundtrack. So it could be something we're looking... Being a small movie, we're still in the marketing and promotion phase, so... Um, so, what made you decide on the, the film being um, dominantly English-based um, as opposed to in the dialect of the, um, you know, the the country or the the setting of that African country. Well, the first thing is the script because it's about an American doctor, mm -hmm. so he would speak in English, and he's coming from LA where they speak English as well. So even if I wanted to make it in Swahili, it will still have a lot of English portions because there are parts where he speaks with his fiance, and that would be in English. And him speaking with other doctors would be in English too, because he doesn't know Swahili. Right. It's unrealistic for the character to learn Swahili. But also, I wanted to reach a broader audience. I right. mean, as, as much as we love Swahili, it's it's limited to the East Africa. Uh, but with with English, we're able to reach other countries that do not speak Swahili. Countries like Nigeria, um, countries like Ethiopia, um, even other countries like Rwanda and Uganda. And their Swahili is very different and they're more comfortable speaking English. Well, maybe not for Rwanda, but Uganda and Kenya. So we're just trying to get, draw a larger audience, basically. But it also feels, fits the story. So it's, it's really too, too, too based. Have you um, thought about maybe having <clears throat> subtext in Swahili for the ones that feel a little excluded? I'm not saying that um, 
the majority of um, East Africa does um, communicate in English and understand as well. But have have you thought about the subtext or in Swahili, or is that something that's still in the making? Or yeah, yeah, subject. We, we make subjects distributed in, in, in East Africa. So right now, we're not really distributed in Kenya, Uganda, or Tanzania. But once we start going into those markets, I think we would add sub subtitles. We're actually thinking of dubbing the whole film in Swahili, but I think that's the that's burden stays with the broadcasters. Uh -huh. So basically, because when you dub a whole movie, it's going to cost you money. I and see. it's never going to be shown on TV there, then it's not like investing money. Do you have um, um, anything that you'd like to share before we close? Um, the film is on iTunes. Please go get it. Uh, it helps. Your $10 goes a long way into helping our industry grow. First, it shows that we have the numbers and there's interest in all kinds of films. Um, and it's also a, a, it's a historical moment in, in diaspora and in African history, in East African history, so please be part of it. Um, secondly, we're doing the US tour coming up soon, yeah, so go on Facebook, find us at Going Bongo, uh, we're on Twitter as Going Bongo, I am on Instagram as Going Bongo, so try to keep in touch see if we're going to be in your city so you can come out and support the film. Um, after that, we're hopefully going to go to the UK, to Germany, and then we're going to go to, to East Africa. So keep in touch with us, uh, drop us a message, uh, drop a review on iTunes, uh, tell your friends about the film, forward the trailer. Uh, basically, let's push this forward so that we can make films about, because if we leave Hollywood to make films about us, they will always portray us as uh, child soldiers and <laughs> what else do we play? Um, child <laughs> soldiers and what else do people know about Africa? What kind of stereotypes? I guess that we're all hungry. Yes. <laughs> right, so if other people make films about us, they're going to paint us in a certain image. So we need to take control of our image and make our own films. The only way we can make our own films is if we support each other. What I can say is be a part of um, making a change. Um, especially a change that you do want to see. If they, um, Going Bongo is actually a movie that's very genuine and it actually portrays an image of Africa in a sense of light that's positive and also encouraging to the growth of its culture as well. Um, so have, when you get an opportunity, just go ahead and watch it. It's a, it's a great movie actually, personally saying. But I am Angela Lubali, your host for Spot View, and we had our one-on-one -on -one exclusive with Ernest Napoleon of Going Bongo.